Could somebody please make it make sense? Hi everybody, welcome to A Pop of Culture. I am your host, the esoteric and facetious, and this is A Pop of Culture, where I speak on pop culture, social justice, and a human experience from a blah 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 black blah 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 bisexual millennial perspective. Every everything I say should be taken with a grain of salt. I'm simply a college student with access to a recording device and internet. With that being said, my use shouldn't be your sole reason to critique my views unless it's truly relevant. With that being said. If you disagree with anything I say, let's have a civil conversation in the comment section below. Before I get into the topic of this video, I want to shout out my cover channel. I have a cover channel, A Pop of Culture Sings, where I sing throwback R&B, contemporary R&B, pop music, whatever I'm feeling, whatever you're feeling. So if you want to be down like Brandy, if you are down with the click, R.I.P. Aliyah, then definitely feel free to check that channel out. It is linked in the description box in the cards and at this time it is the only channel listed in my channel section. Now let's get to the topic of this video. This video is going to be called Where White Is The Sad Truth About Wannabe Normies. This video is inspired by a lot of the backlash that Blair White received after her video about the trans bodybuilder named Janae who she misrepresented in her video which she has since removed. And something we don't often see is that Janae actually went back post-transition and competing against men just because, I guess. Like, it was kind of like, sh she's gone back and forth competing with men and women. With a lot of detective determined, that was a lie. The reason why this situation with Blair inspired this video is basically because Blair is what I would call a wannabe normie. And what do I mean by that? So normies would be cisgender heterosexual people who don't deviate too far from social norms, who are able to navigate through society, especially white cisgender heterosexual people, who, especially those who are probably, I would say, upper middle class and beyond. So people who have access to, res generally speaking, have access to resources, money, like, you know, they don't have to deal with homophobia, transphobia, racism, and things of that sort. People who are not normies will be people who are not white, people who are working class, even probably people who are middle class, people who are not cisgender, people who are not heterosexual, anything that deviates from white, privileged, cishet. That's not to say that people with marginalized identities and backgrounds can't have privilege in certain capacities, but that's just to say that, you know, if you are not white, cisgender, heterosexual, with money, isms and phobias can still affect you. Because I know people are going to say Oprah and Obama and use those people as proof that black people can succeed as if these people cannot be anomalies. It's disclaimer time, time, time. I'm not saying black people can't be successful, but what I'm saying is don't use these few black people who've had this astounding amount of success as an exemplar to pressure other black people by who don't have similar resources or upbringing. Let's not forget that Obama consistently had to defend his birthplace being the United States of America because of critics, one of which including our current president of the United States. As some of you heard, uh, the state of Hawaii released my official long form birth certificate. Hopefully that this puts all doubts to rest. Let's not also forget that Oprah was discriminated against in a store that she clearly had the funds to pay for. She was discriminated because she was black, even though obviously she is a very wealthy woman. And even though this was, you know, a few years back, she was still a wealthy woman then. The Louis Vuitton store, and we see this cute little Louis Vuitton bag. And so uh, she says, you know, I, I, I'd like to have that bag. And I say, okay. So we say to the sales guy, this is the bag, we'd like to have this bag. And he said, no, madam, this bag cannot be sold. This bag cannot be sold. It's impossible. It's impossible for this bag to be sold. We say, but the bag is right there. It's on the shelf. <laughs> that's, that's never happened to me, you know? <laughs> and the bag says, so he says, no, 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 no. This bag is for the Italian people. It's only for the Italian people. And perhaps you can go to your country and you can find the bag in your country. So where does this leave people like Blair White? Blair White, 
as a transgender woman cannot by default be a normie like by definition she cannot be a normie because she's transgender so what does that mean that means that people like blair white are people who carry marginalized backgrounds and identities cannot by default be a normie because they are not white cisgender heterosexual with money so what does that mean that means that people like blair white are want to be normies meaning they want to be people who are accepted by society and who can navigate through society without excessive barriers to entry it's understandable why somebody would want to be a normie because who wants to exist in life with all these barriers to entry you know where you can't do this you can't do that so it makes sense why people would want to be normie there's a reason why people would want to assimilate people don't always want to be other people want to be a part of something so what is the problem of you know wanting to be a normie or what being a wannabe normie i would say the problem of being a wannabe normie is this pressure to conform to what society expects of you can allow you to abuse and mistreat people who are of your camp in order to appear more desirable to the mainstream society i'll give y'all an example in every elementary school class or in every grade, there's gonna be the fat kid. That doesn't mean that there aren't kids that have, you know, a little bit of fat, like that are a little bit chubby, but there's always gonna be one fat kid who is the biggest kid, who is, you know, the most morbidly obese one. And whenever the kids wanna tease them, they're gonna talk, call that kid fat. Or is that kid the only kid who has excess body weight? No, but this kid has the most excess of body weight, which makes them stand out. And in the same way, when we look at non-normies, there's always gonna be people who stand out. And these people are gonna be those who are ostracized the most. So for example, in the LGBT community, the people who are gonna be those who are ostracized the most are gonna be transgender and non-binary people. Because obviously in some parts of the world, same-sex attraction is deemed bad. Understatement of the century. And it's illegal, but in a lot of places around the world, people are more accepting of gay, lesbian, and bisexual people than transgender people because there's this understanding of, you know, people can't change who they're attracted to, but there's a less of an understanding of, you know, people may not identify with the gender they're assigned with at birth. And even going further, at least with binary trans people, there's this understanding of, okay, they were assigned male at birth, but they identify with female, or they were assigned female, and they identify with male. But once you get to non-binary people or people who don't identify as male or female, unlike binary trans people who people can understand because they can understand male or female, as part of the gender binary that we've been brought up in, non-binary people challenge that binary, and that can be confusing or unfamiliar for a lot of people which can put these people even further into the margins this can put pressure on people like trans people who are already ostracized deemed mentally ill and unwell by some which can lead some to turn on each other essentially because no one wants to be the fat kid because if you're the fat kid then everyone laughs at you and jokes on you and you know doesn't view you as somebody that they can be a friend with but if you're the slightly less fat kid you've got a chance you know you can you know make friends and you know you can be the one who's pointing the finger rather having the finger pointing pointed at you and i think that's what a lot of people like blair white do what they do is they point the finger because when i'm pointing the finger at another trans person then you're looking at them and how cringeworthy they are per society standards. By effect, I look so much more normal and acceptable. For example, let's say that Blair White, you know, posts a video of quote unquote trans trenders or, you know, even non-binary people who, you know, may dress in, you know, patterns and, you know, in a styles that are not deemed, you know, what is the norm for either men or women. Blair White gets to point the finger and say, you know, look at how wacky they look while wearing feminine clothing that we would tie to what a woman would wear traditionally. So by pointing the finger at them and how quote unquote wacky they look, she's not only saying that they look wacky, but she's making herself look more normal. It's a, it's a two-pronged thing. By pointing out the 
differences and deviations that people who are less normative are doing she is further ostracizing them while also bringing herself closer to being considered a normie but here's the problem within society with her being transgender she will never be a normie she can ostracize and ostracize these people more and she can have people look at her as less of a trans person in the way that that they view her as less negative so they may think uh these trans people are are people I can't deal with but at least she's tolerable but see here's the thing for a lot of people people like Blair will only be tolerable trans people and I'm sorry to break it to you being tolerable doesn't make you a normie (laughs) being liked doesn't make you a normie I want to parallel this to a book that I'm sure a lot of us read in high school The Great Gatsby take a look it's in a book a reading rainbow So if we look back to The Great Gatsby, we can see West Egg versus East Egg. West Egg versus East Egg by Eric Jossen and Kushal Sanjeev. What is East and West Egg? These two locations are of course not actual eggs and are very important in understanding the novel. These eggs are actually two areas that lay the groundwork for the story. East Egg is known as a place where all the wealthy people live. These people are described as the users of money that was inherited by their parents. West Egg is seen as the up-and-coming area. It's shown as East Egg is seen as a place where all the users of old money live, and West Egg is a place where all the hard workers and people who exist in the growing up class. In our story, Jay Gatsby, who we see through Nick, our protagonist, is someone who comes into money through illegal methods he wasn't born into money he wasn't somebody who was born a half so even though he does this work to become this you know nobleman who can be worthy of daisy no matter what he does no matter what he says daisy's always going to be with her husband because he's somebody who has that status there's always going to be a barrier between him and her it's that west deck versus east deck that old money versus new money And in that same way, Blair can be the quote-unquote voice of reason in conservative spaces, and she can be a voice against quote-unquote transgenders and non-binary people. But as long as she maintains this hope and goal of being a wannabe normie, she's never going to be content because even if she points out these people who are, you know, deviating even farther than what she's deviating from, that's not going to give her a golden ticket ticket. into normalcy because by being a trans woman she was already taken out of that equation forever and this is not just something you see when it comes to trans people this is something you also see when it comes to black people and other minority groups there are certain black people who feel like you know because they got an education and because they speak proper grammar and they do this and they do that that they're not like other black people and you know if only black people could just you know respect ourselves and pull ourselves up by our bootstraps and you know then we could be successful i'm not i use my mind for um my opportunities i'm not looking for anyone's help because of my skin color. I don't see, you know, um, my skin color as uh, some affliction or uh, something that, that that holds me back in the world. And the funny thing is, you know, these people still get, you know, brutalized by the police. They still, you know, get, you know, followed in stores. You know, they still get treated the same way because by them being black, they were never part of the norm. You'll see these, you know, gay men who, you know, you know, they try to be the most macho, macho, macho man. And, you know, they, you know, they'll judge other queer men who are into drag race and makeup and, you know, quote unquote, feminine things. And they'll judge them and they'll judge them and they'll judge them. They'll say, well, I'm a real man. I do this and I do that. And the funny thing is, and there's nothing wrong with people who just genuinely like more masculine, quote unquote, ma- quote unquote, masculine things. So I'm not saying that you can't like those things. I'm saying that you, I'm calling out people who judge other people unfairly because of those things and think that that makes them less of a man and may distance themselves from them and try to, you know, put themselves on a higher level mentally because they don't do those things the funny thing is these people may think that that's you know that behavior is going to reward them but the reality is the second that certain some people find out that those men are gay it doesn't matter if they play sports it doesn't matter if they drink beer it doesn't matter if they don't say yas 
them being LGBT is enough to disqualify them from normalcy and let's disqualify them from being a normie forever. So what is the answer? I've called out a problem, which would be people who are deep, who for their race, their sexuality, their gender, whatever, is causing them to fall out of normalcy and to not be a normie. So the answer, in my opinion, isn't to ostracize other people who share different identities and experiences you do. The answer is to dismantle the systems that are in place that make it where, where people who are not white with money who are cis head can be at the top. Because if we dismantle those systems, then, you know, it's not just the the less fat kids who get to be free and, and ex- exist. It's everybody. Everybody gets to be who they want to be. So if we can dismantle these systems that only value certain types of people and certain experiences and certain backgrounds, then that'll give us the power to all exist in this world as we need to be. It's not going to be just pointing the finger and then hoping that that makes you look better. After we dismantle these systems, we can just exist as the people we are. But do y'all agree? Do y'all not agree? Let me know what y'all think. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for watching. Share your thoughts below. Like this video if you like this video. If you made it to this point in the video, comment a thumbs up emoji below or a still here if you are still here. Subscribe if you want to see more and make sure to hit that bell so you're the first to know when I upload new content. I upload new content every week. And if you're enjoying yourself, and why wouldn't you be enjoying yourself? To the left, there's a playlist of all my video essay and podcasts. I have 24 in counting. In the center is a button to subscribe if you just haven't had a chance to subscribe and you would like to. And to the right is a playlist of all of my covers and parodies. So if you are wanting to check those out, feel free to do so. And if you want to support me, if you want to support the show, first and foremost, a non-financial way you can support is just through sharing this video. I can make the thumbnails, I can, you know, make the titles, I can do the tags and do keyword research. One of the best ways that I can grow my brand is through y'all sharing this content with other people who like this type of content because... I nor you can control the algorithm, but I can control the quality of the content I make. And y'all can, if you enjoy the content, share with people who can like it. So that way, you know, if y'all are feeling it, it's getting put out there. Whether, you know, the algorithm favors it or not, somebody's going to see it. Because you resonated with it and you resonated with me and now you're sharing it with other people. So if that's a non-financial way you can support the channel. And if you do want to support this channel financially... My cash app is linked in the description of this video. You know, I'm trying to, you know, upgrade my production quality and just, you know, keep growing and growing and expanding and, you know, doing bigger and better. So if you want to help and support that vision, feel free to do so. All those who donate to the channel will be featured in the credits of all of my videos on both of my channels. Thanks so much for watching. Love you all. Bye bye. See you next time.